All right, shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Um, so in, in our previous classes, we had done one project on uh, how to integrate the DHD11 or DHD22 sensor um, and uh, push those readings to the cloud, that is ThinkSpeak. Okay. Now we had just pushed this data uh, and we had visualized it on the graphs uh, upon our uh, uh, computers uh, screens okay so now uh, there's something in addition that you can do apart from visualization okay uh, using things now you can do the same visualization on your mobile phones as well so you can download uh, this application and uh, called as um thing thing view it's a it's a freely available uh, uh application that is available in uh play store so what you can do is you can configure this app to visualize this data upon your mobile phone as well not only uh on the computer but you can visualize it on your phone as well now how do you do that um uh, let me just uh, share my uh, mobile phone over here so if you can install this app you will be able to visualize uh, the entire apps over here as well uh, we will be seeing on how do we visualize those things in our second project that is our current project that we, we would like to do um, now I hope uh, most of you have uh, have downloaded the Python script that I have given you, and uh, I uh, I know some of uh, some of you have done it, and uh, uh, so most of you have uh, got um, the visualization, uh, and uh, you were able to plot temperature and humidity. If he, uh, like some of you are uh, like um, uh, Ashi, I think uh, uh, is yet to do yet to test out the application you yes. just have to make a few code changes uh, and uh, you'll you will also be done and i think uh, harshit uh, is still left uh, and uh, needs some help don't worry we'll uh, we'll get it done we still have um, classes and uh, we'll try to uh, sort all of these things uh, in the coming days like, uh, maybe we can spend some extra time tomorrow and uh, we can figure it out okay so today uh, I'll introduce you to a new project that we would be doing okay and that is the smart trash can okay So it's a trash can as well. Okay, so now this is a beautiful automation that we can think uh, in IoT. Now, as you know, IoT stands for uh, Internet of Things, and one of the use case of Internet of Things is to uh, detect an event and take some action. Okay, now one such good action that we can take is um, we can implement such thing and uh, we can notify the concerned authorities. Uh, that uh, if, if, if the trash can is full, 
example, if it is have or uh, it has been recently seen or not. Okay, now uh, this is mainly useful when you can implement it in uh, in your schools or uh, at places where uh, where physical intervention is uh, should be avoided. Okay. So now, uh, since we are living in COVID times, and uh, cleanliness is uh, the uh, the foremost thing that uh, we'll have to follow, and uh, it is also advisable that you do not touch uh, any trash cans or uh, stuff uh, with our bare hands because uh, we never know. Uh, what's what what is in, uh, present in, inside these trash cans um, and um, we, we never know what what it can lead to so let us utilize this project to uh, to make our lives better by uh, by alerting the people who can uh, help us uh, remove the trash can okay so it, it will not only uh, help you, it will also help the society and uh, it will um, uh, it, it will make our surroundings uh, a better place to live in. Okay, so in order to implement this project, I am going to use a new kind of sensor called as the ultrasound sensor. Okay, now for those of you who would like to see how an ultrasound sensor would look like, you should find you, you should be able to find a sensor uh, which looks something similar to it. Okay, so you you will have a two speaker uh, kind of things over here with four pins. So this yes, is yes, sir. I found it. Yes, this is the ultrasound sensor. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. I found it. Okay, okay. So keep it handy with you, and also one breadboard, uh, the same breadboard. You can use the same breadboard and your audio boards. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, what's it? So can the ultrasound sensor detect normal sounds also? No, no, no. This uh, this sensor is uh, does not detect sounds. Uh, in fact, it it just sends a sound wave. And sir, the sound wave. Yeah. Yeah, sir. I have two ultrasound sensors. Okay. okay, you can use. Yes, sir. Anyone. One in the quad okay. sensor and in the sensor. You can use anyone. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you what an ultrasound sensor is and uh, how it is made up of, what it is made up of, and what is the main purpose of an ultrasound sensor okay now uh, let's see what are the components that we would require we would require one audio tuner board sir yeah sir the python program is not working for me the one you sent again oh okay uh, may, may i know your name please uh, Adric, sir Adric, okay so when I type the URL, it says keyboard interrupt or something. Oh, okay. So, Adrik, I'll try to connect with you. And, yeah, uh, okay. We'll see, we'll see uh, on how you can uh, resolve this issue. I think uh, some, uh, some other person also faced a similar issue and uh, we were able to figure it out. Yeah, and, okay. Sorry. Okay. And also, just one more doubt. Should I take out the temperature sensor of the bare board? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Do I like? Can you please repeat that question again? Yeah. Do I take off the temperature yeah. sensor of the? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, all the wires as well. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we would require one Arduino Uno board, an ultrasound sensor. Okay. And. If you can see that the ultrasonic sensor, it has a name called as HC-SR-1. 
zero four. Okay. Now most of our sensors, um, they have such kind of names associated with them, and that name is called as the part number of the sensor. Okay. Now if you go to any open market, and if you want to purchase uh, any sensor, you will have to specify the part number. Okay, because there are multiple ultrasonic sensors in the market, and uh, sometimes uh, if if you buy uh, a new version, then uh, uh, then it will be a bit uh, difficult for you to uh, use it. Okay, so that is why you will have to know uh, the specific part name associated with. Every sensor, okay. Even your DHT sensor, it has its own part name. It starts with AMS. If you would have observed, uh, your uh, DHT sensor, its name is AM two three zero two. It it would be printed upon your sensor. If even 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 if it is not, uh, then uh, do not worry because. Uh, that's the name of the sensor for you okay and you would need a breadboard and a few jumper wires okay now let us see uh oh, sorry sir disturb sir how many jumper wires four jumper wires okay yeah i'll just take them off okay sir uh, the yeah. in the kit there are uh, two types sir one uh, with pins on both sides and one with no pins yeah. so which one should you which one should we take? Uh, the one with pins. Okay, so. Okay, so these are the connections that you will have to make. But excuse me. Uh, let's get back to the connections part. But and let's try to understand what the sensor has to offer us, and what is the mechanism of uh, the sensor how it is working and uh, how it is useful for us okay and then we'll get back to the slide of making the connections okay so your ultrasonic sensor it has four pins vcc the first pin is the vcc second uh, four uh, like last pin is the ground and the middle pins are Trigger, trigger echo. and echo okay now yeah. let's see what uh, what an ultrasound sensor is and how it works. Now, can you tell me, uh, you you all are uh, students of science. You must have studied uh, in your school that uh, the concept of uh, distance and uh, time, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. What is yes, sir. What is the relationship between uh, speed, distance, and time? Speed is equal to distance by time. Yes, speed is distance by, by time. time. Now, what are the units of speed? Uh, meters per second. Uh, yeah. So that makes uh, distance. Uh, it is measured in meters, and time is measured in seconds. Right. Now, can you uh, do a simple conversion for me? Suppose, say, I have specified a distance to be 2.3 kilometers. Okay, I, I just want to want you to work out this small piece of math. Okay, it, it's very simple. I'll help you out. Suppose, say, um, where's the chat window? So here's the chat window. What we'll do is, suppose say, distance is 2.3 kilometers mm -hmm. and time is 25 minutes. Okay, now I want to you, I want all of you to calculate speed 
in hmm. meters per second. Sir, ninety-two meters per second. Okay, ninety-two meters per second. Now, how do you do that? Sir, if uh, we two thousand three hundred kilometers divided by twenty-five minutes, so that would be ninety-two meters per second. And how did you? No, benefit? no, sir. That's kilometers per minute. For meters per second, would be nine fifty-eight point three bar meters per second. Uh huh. So, how you we actually do it is you divide a, yeah. the first number, the kilometers, by the amount of time, twenty-five minutes, to get the answer. Yeah. So we have to convert our kilometers into meters. How do I do that? Means I know that one kilometer is equal to thousand meters. Thousand meters. Okay. And like uh, speed is distance by time. So this is the distance. I figured out the distance in meter. Now I have my time in minutes. Okay. So I'll have to convert my minutes into seconds. Seconds because One minute has sixteen seconds. Okay, now distance is in meters, time is in seconds. Now evaluate this one and uh, tell me what is two point three into thousand. So it's like it's thirty four, thirty four lakh fifty thousand. What's the twenty five times sixty? Twenty-five times sixty. You will get it as one point five three three. Yes, uh, that's the correct answer. One point five three three meters per second. Because two point three into thousand will be. Yeah, that's what I got. Twenty-three uh, hundred, right? Divided by. Twenty-five into sixty. Fifteen hundred. Yes, that is fifteen hundred. Now these two zeros, these two zeros will be cancelled, which will be equal to twenty-three by fifteen. That equals one point five three three meters per second. Okay. So this is uh, quite simple, like evaluating. Uh, Speed uh, in terms of meters per second. Okay, now I, I might uh, I can express my speed not only in meters per second. I can express my speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Yes. So if you would have noticed your vehicles uh, and uh, there's a uh, Odometer upon your vehicles, which practically measures the speed at which you are traveling, and it will show as the speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour, depending on what uh, demographic location you are at. Okay, so you will have to know how to convert meters per second into kilometers per hour. And uh, vice versa. Okay. Now, why I am uh, introducing you to the concept of um, measurement of uh, speed is we will be using this relation in order to measure the uh, distance of an object. Okay. Now, what an ultrasound uh, or an ultrasonic sensor it can do is, you are observing. Uh, you can observe uh, two uh, two sets of things, right? So, uh, what these are are nothing but they are uh, ultrasound speakers. Okay, so one. Can transmit sound and one uh, 
can be able to receive the sound okay now we know that uh, sound is a wave okay so when we transmit sound it travels as a wave now can you tell me uh, other examples of waves do you know any yeah light waves yes well, light light waves. has light is a wave uh, and it is also um, particle in nature it has duality a sonic wave yeah sonic is nothing but sound so supersonic wave yes all all these are sound waves okay okay so we know that sound is a wave now what actually happens is you see two pins on your uh, ultrasonic sensor right called as trigger and echo do you all see it yes sir yes sir yeah yes, sir. so trigger is the pin with which you uh, send a sound wave okay when you make this pin high you will be blasting a wave of sound into air okay suppose say this is your uh, sender and when you send a positive signal to your trigger pin from your arduino board it will blast a sound wave in forward direction okay now if you would have observed uh a sound a wave when it hits an obstacle okay it bounces so, back yes when it hits an obstacle it bounces back so can you observe uh the dotted form of waves yes, over sir. here yes yes sir so so the uh, so the ultrasound echo. sensor will catch those uh, yes. reflected waves yes yes so an ultrasound sensor will do thing will do two things one is it it can blast a sound wave and it can receive a sound wave you see two of the um sensors or uh, like a two speakers kind of things right so one is to send a sound wave the other is to receive a sound wave okay now you can yeah. change uh, which one you would you would like to uh, use for sending and which one you would uh, like to uh, uh, receive but if you can observe that uh, just below your speaker uh, they, it it is written as c and r okay yes sir just observe below over here you can observe yes, that sir. it is written as c and this is written as r So transmitter and receiver. This is the transmitter. Yeah. This is the receiver. A transmitter will transmit the sound waves. A receiver will receive the so uh, sound waves. So this one will transmit, and this one will receive. Okay. So so is this the same concept that uh, satellites work on? No, no. Transmitter. No, no. Satellites uh, work on a different uh, concept. Satellites use uh, different communication protocols, uh, and those are mostly not sound waves. Uh, they are something else. Uh, they they are uh, different kinds of electromagnetic waves, pulses that they transmit. Okay, so we see that. Uh, our ultrasonic sound sensor is able to transmit as well as receive the sound waves okay now we know that each uh, like when we consider uh, any anything as a wave then it has some physical properties associated with it okay now one such physical property associated with the wave is the speed with which it is traveling okay now when we say light is a wave 
it also has a few properties like light is able to travel with some speed with some velocity we say similarly sound is also traveling at a definite speed okay now this speed it varies with the medium that we are talking about okay now what do we mean by medium is um, we can say air is one medium vacuum is one medium okay water is another medium okay now when we consider something like light light do you know uh, at what speed light travels sir 3 lakh kilometers per second yeah 3 into 10 to the power 8 yes sir 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters yes, per yes. second that is the speed of uh, light light similarly even sound has a speed okay the speed of sound in air okay uh, the speed of sound in air as a medium is 340 meters per second sir i heard that in water it is a little bit faster um uh, sir so it's 343 meters sir approximately some people take it as 340 some people as take it as 341 some as 343 it depends upon uh, the area that we are in because air uh, when we consider it as a medium uh, that medium depends upon multiple factors like your air it could be uh, damp if it if you are uh, if, you, if you are in a uh, region which experiences a lot of rainfall similarly if you are in a sunny or a desert area then the sound will be faster yeah because there's no moisture over there so that is why there are a few slow down the sound waves yeah yeah so there are a few variations uh, on the speed of sound depending upon the area that we are uh, located at so Uh, it is safe for us to assume that the speed of sound is around 340 meters per second okay now if you consider uh, water as a medium then uh, the speed of 1450 to 1498 mm -hmm. have you googled that up yes sir <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so speed of sound in water uh, is again um, uh, sound generally travels faster depending upon the medium uh, which we which which we, we choose and yes uh, speed of sound in water is uh, around 1450 meters per second okay so that is around uh, say five times faster if we can safely as you or four times faster than the speed of sound in air okay now we have talked about the speed of sound now let us see how this concept of a speed of a sound is useful for us okay now suppose say i transmit a sound wave i blast a sound wave by giving a positive to my trigger or on my ultrasonic sensor my uh, my wave is traveling it has hit an object once it has hit an object it the wave travels back now can you tell me the distance uh, a sound wave uh, is traveling from start to end suppose say my uh, transmitter is at this position and the distance of this object is at uh, suppose say uh, i i name this distance as r now can you tell me the total distance the sound wave would have traveled from 
transmitter and back to the receiver. If this distance is R and the same distance would, will have to be traveled back, right? If, we are, if it has to reach the receiver back. Yeah. So the total so distance, yes, the total distance would be R plus R, it would be 2R. 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 Okay, so great. So we know that the distance that my sound wave uh, travel uh, is traveling is let us say this 2r now i know the speed of sound don't i it is 340 meters per second okay now i know speed and i can calculate the time now how do i calculate the time is wave plus reflected wave Speed divided by distance. Yeah, I, I'll use this relation, but I will also keep a count of my time in Arduino. Okay, so I can use my Arduino to count time as well. Now, what I'll do is I will blast a wave and start my timer, and I will stop my timer at the time I receive something. Okay, so it will evaluate the time okay now i have time with me i have speed with me okay now what is the uh, total distance that would be traveled distance is so i can evaluate distance as speed into time right yeah yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You distance can. is speed into time. Yes, sir. Now I have evaluated the uh, distance as 2R. Okay. For a distance 2R to be traveled with a speed of 340 meters per second into i can uh, i calculated time using my audio okay so using this relationship suppose say i evaluated the time as 5 seconds and this is 340 meters per second using this i can evaluate the value of r okay r is equals to uh, 340 divided by 10 because this 2 it will go to the denominator's place uh, so, and sorry yeah so 340 into 5 divided by 2 since this 2 will go into divide, uh, the denominator's place so I will I can evaluate my distance in uh, this manner okay so by using an ultrasonic sensor, I would be uh, I I can be uh, evaluating the distance. Now, what is the advantage of finding a distance between my transmitter and an object is? Suppose say I have a dustbin. Now, if I can place this sensor on top of my dustbin. For example, uh, I will show you one uh, one one example over here. Okay, say this is my dustbin. Okay, uh, this this is a bit short, but assume that uh, a normal dustbin would be uh, this long or longer than this, and it would have a cap something similar to this, right? Now. What if I place my sensor over here and if I close this the bin like this, okay, if I close it, close the bin like this, then my sensor, it would be uh, positioned like this and it will be able to transmit one sound wave, okay, 
That's but how, how you get is. stuck? Uh, do you like glue it? Yeah, yeah, you can glue it. Oh, okay. Or you can place a double-sided plaster and uh, stick it over there. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now what you can do is, when you blast the sound wave and it hits an obstacle, it will uh, reflect back. Suppose say this obstacle is your trash. Okay, assume that this obstacle is your trash. Your wave hit the trash and it reflected back and this is able to uh, capture that uh, sound wave again. So you have evaluated uh, at what distance the trash is. Right. Suppo suppose say you already measure the level of your uh, dustbin. Suppose say uh, it would be some 30 centimeters and you have calculated that your trash is at 25 uh, is, is at 5 centimeters away uh, from uh, from your uh, sensor which means 30 minus 25 which means um, 5 centimeters of space is left and 25 centimeters of garbage is already filled up which means you can when you detect something like this you can alert um, the concerned people on uh, suppose say you want you want that person to clear the trash can you can always alert that person and you can um, fix it out right so we can what we can do is we can use the same uh, thing speak to uh, set some alerts for us okay thing speak is not only uh, restricted to just visualizing the data it you can also use it to trigger some alerts like you can trigger some uh, email alerts or you can post it on twitter you can send an sms so there are multiple capabilities that uh, thing speak uh, offers us so we'll try to use uh, one such thing and we'll try to send an sms or one email or post it on twitter and see uh, how our uh, automatic or smart trash can would work okay so in order to do that we'll have to first code something upon our audio okay now the code is uh, like i will implement whatever we have discussed about speed distance and time in terms of my audio code okay so first i'll have to declare my uh, trigger pin and my echo pin okay so uh, like uh, can you please open up your uh, Arduino and uh, do the typing with me yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah so i will yes, declare an integer uh, variable called as trig pin and assign it some value of 11 okay now what what is trig pin is nothing but it is the trigger pin okay and my echo pin let me as assign it some value called as 12 okay now what is the uh, uh, what is 11 and 12 is nothing but the pins in which my trigger and echo will be placed. Okay, now if you can observe uh, over here, I have connected my uh, trig pin to the eleventh pin. Okay, trig is pin eleven. So echo. can you leave that up so we can also uh, add our boards, uh, set our boards up? Uh, yes. Uh, We'll do the code first and uh, we'll set this up. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. I'll send it to you. Okay, so let's let us try to finish the code in our uh, in today's class, and uh, we will also set up the uh, sensor and we'll try to integrate it with our uh, thing speak tomorrow. Okay, so. That is why I have declared my trig pin as 11 and 
uh, echo pin as 12. Now I'll have to declare a few other variables like the duration. Duration means time. Distance, uh, I'll be measuring it in centimeters. So I am uh, creating a new variable called as uh, CM. And I will also measure my distance in inches. Okay. Because uh, you can convert them from uh, one form to other. So what I'll do is I'll declare three variables duration to measure my time centimeters to measure my distance and inches also to measure distance. Okay. Once you are done with it, what we, what we can do is we can begin our serial monitor. Okay. And I am beginning it with a baud rate of 9,600. Now, please note that you will have to write serial dot begin with a specified baud rate in order for you to use serial dot print or serial dot print mm -hmm. If you do not do the step or if you ignore the step, then your serial dot print will not work. Sir, how much baud rate should it be? You can choose it as 9600. You can uh, uh, you can have multiple options like uh, double one five two double zero etc. But uh, those high baud rates might not uh, be suitable for your Arduino Uno. They will work, but uh, let us stick to the basic of nine thousand six hundred. Okay. Now once I am done with um, serial dot begin, I'll have to set my pin modes of eleven and twelve. Like what will be input and what will be output. Now my trigger pin will be output and echo pin will be input. Can you tell me why I am uh, making one as input and one as output? Because the receiver will give you the input and the transmitter will output the sound rate. No, no, no. Okay. You are, uh, so what you can, what you should understand is the trigger pin of your ultrasonic sensor is actually the uh, the input that you would be giving, but when you are connecting it to your Arduino, it will act as an uh, like uh, you will have to. Uh, uh, give an output uh, of 5 volts to that pin. So that is why I am selecting it as an output. For the ultrasonic sensor, it is input. But for Arduino, it is output. So that is why I am jumbling over here. Okay, okay sir. Wow. Should we save it, sir? Uh, yes. We still have some code uh, left to do. Like we'll have to do the uh, code of the loop. Okay. Okay, sir. Now our setup is done. So I have se selected the input, and I have selected the output. Now uh, some of you had uh, doubts that uh, uh, can we uh, use any pin as input, and uh, why I'm selecting a, a, the pin as output. So here, if you can see, I am declaring a pin as an input because I'll have to read. Uh, whatever echo has been done, like whatever uh, I have, uh, I'm receiving, I'll have to uh, receive it as an input. Then only I'll be able to read it. Okay, so that is why I'm declaring one as input, one as output. Okay, now our loop is a bit big because we'll have to implement our logic. But our logic is pretty simple. I'll all I'll have to do is. Uh, I'll have to um, simply uh, implement the relation between speed, distance, and time. 
Okay. So in order for me to do that, what I'll have to do is I'll have to make my uh, trigger pin low for uh, five milliseconds. Now my uh, my thing is working with an inverted logic. So what I'm doing is uh, first I'm setting my trigger pin low. Then I am I, I'm giving a delay of five milliseconds. Then I'm setting it for uh, five, like. Uh, I'm setting it for high and giving a delay of 10 milliseconds. Okay. And then I'm turning it back low. Yeah. I just, uh, but we don't have to write delay microseconds, right? We can just write delay. Yeah, you can write delay, but inside this thing, you, you, you'll have to specify it as 5000 instead of 5. Okay. I'm just using this example to show you that you can uh, use this function as well. Instead of delay microseconds, you can use delay as well. But inside, you will have to specify your uh, delay in terms of uh, uh, the uh, milliseconds. Okay. So instead of that, we will be using a delay in microseconds itself. Now, do you know the difference between milliseconds and microseconds? No, sir. Okay. No, when, sir. When you divide a second by thousand, you will get a millisecond. Okay, but when you divide by, uh, when, when you divide it by uh, one crore uh, or one million, you will get it as uh, microsecond. Okay, so when you have, let me just write it out here. Divided by one thousand. One microsecond. One microsecond is equal to one divided by three more. Sir, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, now it's better, sir. Yes, sir. I think somebody uh, switched yeah. off with mic. Yeah. Okay, so this is microsecond. One second divided by uh, one and uh, six zeros. But here it is only 1000. Millisecond is one divided by 1000. Okay. So okay. one divided by one with uh, yeah. No question, sir. You said okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. So now why I am following such a pattern is my ultrasonic sensor. Uh, it will work uh, in a uh, in a specified manner. I'll draw it for you and I'll show it to you. Just give me a minute. Okay, so let me start my video. And uh, I hope all of you are able to see my diagram over here. Now, what I am doing is for first five microseconds, I am giving a low, which means I am giving it zero volts supply. Okay, I'm giving uh, zero volt supply for the first five microseconds, and then for the next 10 microseconds, I am giving it a supply of 
5 volts okay from low i'm making it to high and giving a delay of 10 microseconds for the next 10 microseconds it will stay high then i'm bringing it back to low okay now why i'm well why i have to do that is in order to um energize my uh, transmitter i will have to give up trigger of just 10 microseconds okay so for 10 microseconds if i make it on or if i give it a high then it will blast a sound wave that is how this ultrasonic sensor will work you can give uh, anything uh, about 10 microseconds as well but just a 10 microseconds blast is enough okay when you just switch it on for 10 microseconds then uh, it it can emit a sound wave so that is what i am doing over here for 10 microseconds i am uh, switching on my uh, uh, my thing and it will blast one sound wave now you can uh, think of uh, something like a uh, a gun uh, or some machine gun that you are uh, holding now what the first uh, what the police or uh, the military people they do is uh, they hold the gun for uh, some uh, they hold the trigger for uh, some time and uh, the bullets will be sprayed from the uh, machine gun right so the longer they hold the more uh, uh, bullets that will be sprayed uh, now if you want to control that machine gun you you will uh, you will hold that for uh, uh, very less uh, amount of time right so that is something similar to what we are doing over here we do not want to over utilize uh, our uh, sound wave we do not want to send a sound wave that is uh, more powerful like uh, we just want to limit our sound wave so that is why we are just um, uh, sending it a sound wave for 10 microseconds you got that uh, point right why we are doing it okay so let me go into and let me quickly type it it's well right you can follow this over here and start typing it okay for now please use delay microseconds itself and not uh, the regular delay let me just copy this same thing and i'll paste it Okay, for my five microseconds, I'll have to keep it low, then high, then for 10, I'll have to go. Sir, you told that yours is working on a uh, reverse way, right? So, should we write it as high, low, or? No, mine is working in uh, reverse, but this program uh, is correct. Okay. Like, um, your, uh, yeah, okay, sir. I got it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, then I am changing my pin mode open as input. Okay, so I, I need not do this again because I have already done it over here. Okay. But let me just uh, redo it. Now I'll be using the variable called as duration that I have created. Okay. Now, if you can observe, these are global variables that I have created. Okay. Because I have created them outside my functional box. <clears throat> now I'll measure the duration as pulse in of echo pin to high okay 
now i am measuring the duration uh, of my echo pin to turn as i okay which means uh, i'll count the time until which my echo pin uh, or the uh, the input uh, is high which means i'm just counting how much time it has uh, taken to travel okay so now in order to uh, get my uh, distance what i'll have to do is i'll have to use this conversion formula okay duration by 2 now you know why i did duration by 2 it is because uh, the time that i'm measuring is for both transmitting as well as receiving right so that is why i'm dividing it by 2 yeah and i'm dividing the whole answer by a value of uh, 29.1 or i can simply multiply it with 0. Uh, 0 three four three if you can observe this uh, 0 point zero three four three is nothing but the speed of sound I I told you right the speed of sound is uh, we take it as 340 meters per second or uh, 343 meters per second okay now if you divide that 340 meters per second uh, by one you will get this answer 29.1 you can try it out or you can simply multiply it with a factor of 0 0.0343 now why i am uh, why i am taking this value as 0 0.0343 is because i have converted my meters to centimeters okay so th for that reason, I'll have to uh, use this factor in centimeters. Okay. Now, in order to get inches, I'll use this formula. Okay. Now, uh, one inch is equal to 12.54 centimeters. So, if I can make just make the math, I will get this formula. Okay. So, I will... Uh, substitute these two formulas and uh, I will simply print my output upon my computer screen. Okay, now if you want, I will just uh, mail this program to you and uh, I will also give you the connections. Like, I will share you the connections today. What you can do is you can make the connections and you can uh, just uh, send that uh, connections that you have made to me I will verify and you can simply upload this code and uh, just uh, you can try out your uh, like open your uh, serial monitor and see the distance what it has what it is printing okay now when you can I am leaving this as an uh, exercise to you so that you will get some hands-on experience on how we are doing it Okay, so I'll uh, stop my class today with uh, this point and I am sharing this PPT uh, right away. So what you can, what I'm expecting you to do is make these connections and upload this code and uh, just see if you are getting the output. It is something similar to what we have done with DHT. Only thing is that the code is a bit uh, different over here okay in our next class what we will do is uh, we will write another python program and we'll try to take this data and uh, we'll try to um, send it to thingspeak and from thingspeak we will write uh, we will write another program so that we can send an sms okay so uh, i'm stopping this and i'm sh uh, sharing my uh, ppt with you all so just try out, uh, do not be afraid, just make the connections and uh, send those connections to me. I will verify and uh, you, can, um, uh, you can visualize the output, okay?
Yeah, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.